Chapter One of Book Five of Metaphysics by Aristotle, translated by John McMahon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Geoffrey Edwards. Chapter One the first principles and causes of entities are under investigation and it is evident that the investigation regards the causes and first principles of entities so far forth as they are entities for there is a certain cause of health and of a good habit of body and of mathematical entities likewise are there first principles and elements and causes and in general also every science which is an intellectual one or in any degree even partaking of the faculty of thought is conversant about causes and first principles which are either more accurate or more simple as the case may be all of these however being descriptive of one particular subject and a particular genus are engaged about this but not concerning being or entity simply considered nor so far forth as it is entity nor do they make any account of the substance of a thing but from this one particular subject partly from sense making this manifest and partly assuming an hypothesis as to substance or quiddity they accordingly demonstrate the things that are essentially inherent in the genus about which they subsist either more necessarily or more feebly wherefore it is evident that there is not a demonstration of substance nor of quote, the what close quote, a thing is that is of quiddity by means of an induction of such a kind but there is some other mode of manifestation in like manner also these sciences say nothing as to whether the genus about which they are engaged is or is not on account of its belonging to the same faculty of thought or understanding and of its making manifest the nature of a thing and whether it is this particular thing but since also physical science happens to be conversant about a certain genus of entity for about such a sort of substance is it conversant in which is contained in itself the first principle of motion and of rest it is evident that it is neither practical nor productive that is effective for the first principle of things that are productive resides in the producer or efficient cause whether that principle be mind or art or a certain capacity but the first principle of things that are practical is free will in the agent for the same thing is an object of action and of free will wherefore if every dianoetic faculty be either practical or productive or speculative the physical dianoetic energy would be some speculative science but speculative about such an entity as it is possible should have motion imparted to it and about such a substance as existing according to reason for the most part has not a separable subsistence merely it is requisite however as regards the essence or formal cause and the definition how things are so that this should not escape our notice as without this knowledge at least the present investigation would be the accomplishing of nothing but of things that are defined and to which the inquiry what they are belongs some subsist in such a manner as the flat nose and some as the hollow and these differ since flat nose is conceived along with matter for in truth a flat nose is a hollow nose but hollowness or concavity is without sensible matter if therefore all physical or natural things are predicated in the same way as flat nose as for instance nose eye face flesh bone in short animal leaf root bark in short plant for the definition of none of these subsists without motion but such invariably involves matter it is plain how it is necessary in physical inquiries to investigate the nature of a thing and to define it and why also it is the part of the natural philosopher to institute an inquiry concerning a certain soul 
namely such a soul as is not unconnected with matter that therefore the physical dianoetic energy is speculative is evident from these statements but also the mathematical dianoetic energy is speculative also whether it is conversant however about entities that are immovable and capable of a separate subsistence is a point that at present is obscure but that certain mathematical systems investigate certain entities so far as they are immovable and so far as they have a separable subsistence is clear now if there is something that is eternal and immovable and that involves a separate subsistence it is evident that it is the province of the speculative that is of the ontological science to investigate such it is not certainly the province of physical science at any rate for physical science is conversant about certain movable natures nor of the mathematical but of a science prior to both of these that is the science of metaphysics for physical science i admit is conversant about things that are inseparable to be sure but not immovable and of mathematical science some are conversant about entities that are immovable it is true yet perhaps not separable but subsisting as in matter but metaphysics or the first philosophy is conversant about entities which both have a separate subsistence and are immovable and it is necessary that causes should be eternal all without exception but particularly these for these are the causes of the things that are manifest or phenomenal amongst those that are divine wherefore according to this view of things there would be three speculative philosophies namely the mathematical the physical the theological for it is not obscure that if what is divine exists anywhere it resides in such a nature as this and it is requisite that that should be the most honourable science which is conversant about a genus of things which is most entitled to our respect the speculative sciences accordingly are more eligible than the rest of the sciences and of such as are speculative this science of metaphysics now under investigation is more eligible than all the others for one would feel a doubt as to whether at all the first philosophy or ontology is universal or conversant about a certain genus and one nature for neither is there the same method of conducting our inquiries in the mathematical sciences but geometry in fact and astronomy are conversant about a certain peculiar nature yet in reply to this i would say that pure mathematics universally is common to all the branches of that science and thus that the first philosophy universally is common to all the sciences if then there is not some different substance besides those that consist by nature the physical would be the first science but if there is a certain immovable substance this will be prior and the subject of the first philosophy and in this way will subsist universally because it is the first of the sciences and it would be the province of this science of metaphysics or ontology to institute an inquiry respecting entity so far forth as it is entity and respecting quiddity or the nature of a thing and respecting those things that universally are inherent in it so far forth as it is entity chapter two since however entity simply so called is denominated in many ways of which one was that which subsists according to accident and another that which is as a thing that is true and the non-being of which is as a thing that is false and besides these since these are figures of predication as for example quiddity and quality and quantity and the place where and the time when and whatever else there is that is significant in this way further besides all these is there that which subsists in potentiality and that which subsists in energy since however i say entity is denominated in many ways in the first instance as far as regards that subsisting according to accident must we declare that respecting this there exists no speculation and a proof of this statement is the following for in no science is there any attention paid to this neither in practical nor productive nor speculative science 
for neither does one who builds a house make at the same time as many things as are accidental to the house when it is built for these are infinite there is no hindrance for example but that the house when it has been constructed should prove to some persons agreeable but to others injurious and to others serviceable and as i may say different from all entities of none of which the building art is productive and in the same manner neither does the geometrician speculate into things which in this way are accidental to figures nor whether there is any difference between a wooden triangle and a triangle having angles equal to two right angles and this coincidence takes place rationally for the accidental subsists as it were in name merely wherefore after a certain mode plato judiciously arranged nonentity about the art of the sophist for the arguments of the sophists are employed about the accident as i may say most especially of all things for they ask for instance whether a musician and a grammarian are a different person or the same and whether the musical choruscus and choruscus are the same and whether everything which may exist yet not always has been generated wherefore whether in case a man is musical he has been made grammatical and whether in case he is grammatical he has been made musical and as many other arguments no doubt as there are of this kind for accident appears to be a something that hovers on the confines of nonentity now this is evident also from such arguments as the foregoing for of those things that subsist in a different way from accidents there is generation and corruption but this is not the case with those things that subsist according to accident nevertheless however must we further discuss concerning accident as far as is possible what is its nature and on account of what cause it exists for at the same time perhaps will it be evident on account of what reason also there is not a science of it since therefore there are in entities some things that are always disposed in a similar manner and from necessity a necessity that is not denominated according to what is violent but that which we have spoken of in the case of its not being admissible for a thing to be otherwise than it is and since other things though these are not of necessity to be sure nor always yet are in existence for the most part this is the first principle and this the cause of the subsistence of accident for whatever may be neither always nor for the most part this we pronounce to be an accident as for instance in the dog days that is when the sun is in canis if there should prevail storm and cold we say that this is accidental we should not however speak in this manner should stifling heat and warmth be generated because the latter invariably or at least for the most part is prevalent at such a season of the year whereas the former is not and that a man is white is an accident for neither is he always so nor for the most part but that man is an animal is not according to accident and for a builder to have been instrumental in producing good health is an accident because a builder is not fitted by nature to accomplish this but a physician is but it would be an accident for the builder his being a physician and a cook aiming at furnishing pleasure would probably make something calculated to promote health but not in accordance with or by virtue of the art of cooking wherefore we say that this would be accidental and that in a certain respect the cook makes something that is salubrious but simply considered that he does not so for of some things are there other potentialities that sometimes are productive but of others there is no definite art or potentiality for of those things that are or are generated according to accident the cause also is according to accident wherefore since all things are not from necessity and always either are entities or are in generation but since most things have a subsistence for the most part it is necessary that there be in existence something which subsists according to accident and that it should be such as is a white musician who exists neither always nor for the most part 
since sometimes however such is produced there will be a subsistence according to accident and if not all things will subsist from necessity wherefore matter will be the contingent cause of what is accidental differently from that which has a subsistence for the most part we must however assume this as a beginning of the inquiry whether there is nothing which subsists neither always nor for the most part or whether this is impossible accordingly in addition to these things is there something which in one way or other has a casual subsistence and a subsistence according to accident shall we however admit that that which has a subsistence for the most part and that which has a perpetual subsistence is not inherent in the nature of anything or are there certain entities that are eternal concerning these points indeed we will afterwards examine that however there is not a science of the accidental is manifest for certainly every science is a science either of that which subsists always or of that which subsists as for the most part for otherwise how should one learn anything or instruct another for it is necessary that the object of the science be defined either by that subsisting always or that having a subsistence for the most part as that meat is useful for the most part for one that is sick of fever what however is beyond this it will not be allowable to affirm namely as to the time when it may not be useful as for instance during new moon for either always or for the most part is the mead serviceable during new moon also and what is different from these is accidental what in truth therefore the accidental is and from what cause it arises and that there is no science of it in existence has been declared chapter three now that there are first principles and causes that are generable and corruptible without anything rising into existence and falling into decay is evident for if this were not the case all things would subsist from necessity if of that which is being produced and corrupted there must needs be a certain cause which does not subsist according to accident for whether will this particular thing take place or not if at least this be produced it will but if not by no means will it take place but this latter will take place if something else is accomplished and so it is manifest that when time is subtracted from finite duration you will invariably come to the present moment wherefore this person will die either by disease or violence if he at least go forth out of the city and this will take place if he should be thirsty and this will happen if something else happens and so will he come to that which now is or to something of those things that have been as for instance if he may have felt thirst and this will happen if he eats things that are pungent to the taste and this assuredly is the case or is not wherefore he shall necessarily either die or shall not die in like manner also if any one pass over in his inquiry to the things that have been done the reasoning is the same for already does this subsist in something but i speak of that which has been done accordingly all things that are likely to be in future will subsist from necessity as for instance the death of one that is living for already has something been accomplished which shows a tendency towards dissolution i mean the existence of things that are contrary in the same body but if the death of this person is to be brought about by disease or violence not as yet has this taken place but should this particular thing be effected it is evident then that this reduction advances towards a certain principle and this principle no longer extends to anything else therefore will this be the principle of what is casual and there will be nothing as a cause of its generation but into what sort of first principle and what sort of cause such a reduction may be made whether as into matter or as into the final cause or as into the power that imparts motion that is the efficient cause is particularly worthy of consideration chapter four therefore indeed respecting the entity 
which subsists according to accident let the discussion be dismissed for the subject has been determined with sufficient accuracy now that which subsists as true is entity and that which subsists as false is non-entity since they are employed about composition and division and entirety about a portion of contradiction for that which is true involves an affirmation in the case of composition and a negation in the case of division but that which is false involves the contradiction of this division but how it is possible to understand what subsists at the same time or has a separate subsistence this is another question now i mean that things which subsist together and that which subsists apart are disposed in such a way as not to subsist in a consequent order but so as to become one certain thing for not in things themselves are the false and the true as that which is good is true but that which is bad is false but in the understanding and the truth and falsehood concerning things that are simple and concerning essence are not in the understanding either as many points then as it is requisite to examine into as regards entity subsisting in this way and regarding non-entity must be investigated on a subsequent occasion since however composition and division are in the intellect but not in the things themselves and that which is an entity after this manner is different from those things that are properly termed entities for either the nature of a thing or its being of a certain quality or quantity or something else of the kind doth the intellect conjoin or separate that which as an entity subsists as an accident and that which is as it were what is true the consideration of these must be omitted for the cause of the one is indefinite but of the other a certain affection of the understanding and both are conversant about the remaining genus of entity and do not render manifest any nature that is of an higher order than entity wherefore let these points be omitted to be sure but we must examine the causes and the first principles of entity itself so far forth as it is entity and it is evident in what we have laid down concerning the multifarious predication of everything that entity is denominated in many ways end of chapter four and end of book five recording in memory of mitchell edwards chapter one of book six of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter one entity is denominated in many ways as we have previously made the division in the case of those statements relating to its multifarious predications for one signification of entity is quote, the what a thing is close quote, or quiddity and this certain particular thing and another is quality or quantity or each of the rest of the things that are so predicated now seeing that entity is spoken of in thus many ways it is evident that the first entity amongst these is quiddity or Quote, the what a thing is close quote, which signifies substance for when we say that this particular thing is of a certain quality we term it either good or bad but not as of three cubits or that it is a man when however we say what a thing is we term it not white or warm or of three cubits but a man or a god but the other entities are denominated so in regard of belonging to entity that is really such some to it as being quantities and some qualities and some passions and others some other things of the sort wherefore one might feel perplexed as to whether walking and health and sitting were each of them an entity or a non-entity 
and in like manner also is it the case with any whatsoever of the other things of this kind respecting which similar doubts are entertained for none of them is adapted by nature either to subsist essentially or is capable of being separated from substance but rather if i may express myself so this is to be said of any amongst the entities which is walking and sitting and being in sound health and these rather than those appear to be entities because they have some definite subject and this is substance and the singular which appears in the category of this kind for that which is good or the sitting posture is not expressed without this also it is evident therefore that each of those also subsists on account of this wherefore that which is primarily entity and not any particular entity but entity simply or absolutely will constitute substance therefore that which is first is denominated in many ways nevertheless first of all is substance both in reason and knowledge and time and nature for no one of the rest of the categories is capable of a separate subsistence but this alone and in definition is this first for in the definition of everything there is a necessity that the definition of substance be inherent and then we think we know each particular thing especially when we know what man is or fire is rather than when we know the quality or the quantity or the situation of a thing since we then come to know each of these things when we know what the quantity of them is or the quality and unquestionably also was that originally and at the present time and always a subject of investigation and invariably of doubt namely what entity is that is what substance is for some say that this is one but others that it is more than one and some maintain that things which are finite are this entity but others things that are infinite wherefore also especially and primarily and exclusively as i may say we must investigate concerning that which subsists as entity after this manner as to what it is chapter two now substance seems to subsist no doubt in bodies most palpably wherefore we say that both animals and plants and the parts of them are substances and we say the same of natural or physical bodies as fire and water and earth and everything of this sort and as many as are either parts of these or are composed of these either partly or entirely as both the heaven and its parts stars and moon and sun whether however these are the only substances or whether there are others besides or whether no one of these but certain different ones are substances this must be examined into but to some the boundaries of bodies as superficies and line and point and monad seem to be substances and that too rather than body and solidity further with the exception of things that are sensible some are not of opinion that there is anything in existence of the kind but others that there are many such and that especially those entities have a subsistence which are eternal as plato considered both forms and mathematical entities as two substances and as a third the substance of sensible bodies but speusippus starting from one says that there are many substances and first principles of each substance one of numbers but another of magnitudes then another of soul and in this way extends therefore the classes of substance and some affirm that forms and numbers have the same nature but that other things that are connected therewith as lines and surfaces belong to a second class of substances as far as to the substance of the heaven and to sensibles accordingly respecting these we must consider what it is that is said well or not well 
and what substances exist and whether there are certain ones besides sensibles or are not and how these subsist also whether there is any separable substance and why there is and after what mode of subsistence or whether there is no substance besides sensibles this i say must form the subject of our investigation having first delineated substance in a sketch of what it is chapter three now substance is denominated if not multifariously yet at least in four ways particularly for both the essence or the formal cause and the universal and the genus seem to be substance in each thing and fourth of these is the subject but the subject is that of which other things are predicated while itself is no longer predicated of any other thing wherefore concerning this point we must come to a determination in the first instance for substance appears especially to be the primary subject now in some such manner is matter denominated substance but in another way form and in a third that which results from or is a compound of these now i mean by matter brass for instance but by form the figure of the idea and by that which is composed of these the statue in its entirety wherefore if form be prior to matter and rather than it is entity or being also for the same reason will be prior that which is a compound of both now therefore by way of a rough delineation has it been declared what substance is at all namely that it is not that which is predicated of the subject but is that of which other things are predicated it must needs however be spoken of not in this manner solely for such is not sufficient for this account of it is obscure and further matter becomes substance for if matter is not substance what else is escapes our comprehension for when other things are removed away nothing appears remaining for other things are the passive conditions of bodies and our productions and potentialities but length and breadth and depth are certain quantities but not substances for quantity is not substance but rather that wherein these very qualities are inherent primarily that is substance but unquestionably if we take away length and depth and breadth we see nothing left except whatsoever is bounded by these wherefore to persons conducting the inquiry in this way matter must needs appear only as substance and i call matter that which essentially is termed neither quiddity nor quantity nor anything else of those things whereby entity is defined for there is something of which each of these is predicated from which quote, the being close quote, is different as well as from each of the categories for the other things are predicated of substance but this of matter wherefore that which is ultimate essentially is neither quiddity nor quantity nor quality nor any other such thing neither therefore are negations so for these also will have a subsistence according to accident in consequence of these things no doubt therefore it happens with speculators that matter is regarded as substance this however is impossible for both a capability of separation in its subsistence and the subsisting as this particular thing seem to inhere especially in substance wherefore form and that which is composed of both would appear to be substance rather than matter indeed then as regards the substance which is composed of both i mean composed of matter and form the consideration of this must be omitted for it is posterior and manifest but somehow matter also is plain but respecting the third substance must there be an inquiry made for this is most perplexing now certain substances of sensibles are acknowledged to exist wherefore in the case of these let us in the first place institute an examination 
chapter four but since in the beginning of this book we have made a division in how many ways we define substance and of these a certain one seems to be the essence or the very nature of a thing we must make an inquiry respecting this for advantageous is the transition to what is more known for in this way is instruction imparted to all by means of advancing through those things that are less known to nature to things that are more known and this is something accomplished as in practical things the having made from those things that are good to each things that are good to each generally so from things that are more known to oneself the having made things that are known to himself to be known to nature as well as things that are known to individuals and such as are first and are often but little known and often involve little or nothing of entity nevertheless however from things badly known to be sure yet known to oneself must we endeavour to attain a knowledge of things generally known making a transition as has been stated by the way of these very things and in the first place let us speak there of some things logically because the very nature of everything is that which is denominated as subsisting essentially or absolutely for your essence does not consist in being in one that is musical for not according to yourself are you musical your essence then subsists according to yourself for truly not everything that is essentially present to a thing is the very nature of that thing for that is not the case with that which is so essentially present as a white surface since the being of a surface is not the same thing with the being of what is white but doubtless neither is that which is composed of both namely the being of a white surface the same as the essence of superficies should the question be asked why it is not our reply is because superficies is contained in the definition of white surface in whatever definition then expressive of this this will not be found inherent this will be the reason of the essence or very nature of each thing wherefore if the being of a white surface is the being of a smooth surface the being white and smooth is one and the same thing but since also in accordance with the rest of the categories there are natures that are composite for there is a certain subject to each as to quality and quantity and the time when and the place where and motion we must examine if there is a definition of the very nature or essence of each of them and also whether the essence of a thing is inherent in these as for example if in man the essence of white man is inherent now let his name be garment what then is the being of a garment but doubtless neither does this belong to those things that are expressed absolutely or shall we say that a thing which is not essential is predicated in two ways and that of this the one is from addition but the other is not so and in regard of this being added to another thing it is denominated as that which is defined for instance if one defining the being white should assume the definition of white man another thing is so denominated because something else is not added to it for example if a garment signifies a white man but some one should define the garment as white in this case a white man is doubtless something that is white yet his essence or very nature does not consist in being white but in being a garment is there then in short in existence such a thing as the essence or very nature of entities or not for whatsoever is the very nature of a thing is the essence of that thing but when one thing is predicated of another it is not this certain particular thing as for instance a white man is not this certain particular thing if the being this particular thing belong to substances only wherefore the very nature of a thing appertains to those things the discourse respecting which is a definition but not every discursus which signifies the same thing as the name is a definition for in this case all discourses would be definitions for the name will be the same with any discourse whatsoever 
wherefore also the term iliad will be a definition but if it may be one of some primary thing a discourse is then a definition and things of this kind are such as are spoken of not in respect of the predication of one thing of another the very nature of a thing will not accordingly be found in any of those things that are not the species of a genus but in these only for these seem to be predicated not according to participation and passion nor as an accident but no doubt there will be a discourse of each thing and it will signify something of the other things if it be a name i mean that this particular thing is inherent in this or instead of the simple assertion is there one that is more accurate but it will not be a definition nor the essence or very nature of a thing or also shall we say that definition as well as the essence of a thing is expressed in many ways for also the inquiry what the nature of a thing is in one way signifies substance and the being this particular thing but in another each of the categories quantity quality and whatever things else there are of this sort for as the inquiry what a thing is also belongs to all things though not after a similar manner but to one thing primarily and to others in a consequent order so also the nature of a thing inheres in the substance simply but in other things in a sort of a way for also as to the quality of a thing we could ask the question what it is wherefore likewise quality belongs to those things to which the inquiry what they are appertains but not simply considered but just as in the case of non-entity certain speculators say that it is non-entity logically speaking not simply but that it is non-entity so also is it with respect to quality it is necessary therefore to examine also how one should speak of everything not certainly at any rate more than how each thing subsists or is disposed wherefore now also since what is spoken is manifest the very nature or essence of a thing will also in like manner be inherent primarily and simply in substance and afterwards in other things as in the inquiry what a thing is the essence or very nature of that thing will not be inherent simply but with the addition of quality or quantity will the essence be inherent for it is requisite to speak of the existence of these entities either equivocally or with addition and ablation as also that which is not the object of scientific knowledge is a thing that may be scientifically known since this is correct at least neither to speak of these equivocally nor in like manner but just in such a way as what is medicinal is predicated in reference to one and the same thing without however being one and the same thing and yet indeed is not equivocally predicated either for no medicinal body is termed a work and an apparatus either equivocally or according to one but in relation to one thing therefore in whatsoever way one chooses indeed to express these things makes no difference this however is evident that definition primarily and absolutely considered and that the essence or very nature of a thing belong to substances notwithstanding they belong to other things also in a similar manner except not primarily for there is no necessity even though we should admit that a name has the same signification with a certain discourse that a discourse about that which the name signifies should be a definition of this but this will take place if the name may have the same signification with a discourse at least a certain discourse and this takes place if it be of one thing not by continuity as the iliad or whatever things else are one by connection but if it is as multifariously expressed as one thing is unity however is predicated in as many ways as entity and entity signifies partly this particular thing and partly quantity and partly quality wherefore also of white man will there be a certain discourse and definition 
and in another way will there be the same both of that which is white and of substance chapter five this statement however involves a doubt in case any one denies definition to be a discourse subsisting from addition of what the definition will be of those things that are not simple but connected together for from addition it is necessary to make them manifest now i say for instance there is nose and hollowness and flatness of nose i mean that which is called from both of these in respect of this being inherent in that and neither the hollowness nor the flatness of nose is according to accident at least a passion of nose but subsists essentially nor do they subsist as the white in callius or man because callius is white to whom it is an accident to be man but they subsist as the male in animal and the equal in quantity and in the same way as all those things that are said to be essentially inherent but these are those in whatsoever is inherent either the definition or the name of which this is an affection and which it is not possible to manifest separately as it is possible to make manifest the white without man not so however the female without animal wherefore the very nature and definition of these are either of nothing or if there is a definition of these it is in a manner otherwise from what we have declared and there is also another matter of doubt about these for if in truth a flat nose and a hollow nose are the same the same thing will be the flat and the hollow but if not on account of its being impossible to use the word flat even without the thing of which it is an essential affection and if flatness of nose will be a hollowness in the nose the speaking of flat nose either is a thing not possible or the same thing will be said twice over as thus nose is hollow nose for the nose that is the flat nose will be a hollow nose wherefore the inherence in things of this sort of what is the essence or formal principle would be absurd and if it were not absurd there would be a progression ad infinitum for in a nose a flat nose will there further be inherent something else that is essential it is evident therefore that of substance only is their definition for if it were also of the rest of the categories it must needs be from addition as in the definition of quality and unevenness for it is not framed without number nor is the definition of female framed without animal now definitions formed from addition i call those in whatever the same things happen to be said twice as in these and if this be true neither will there be definition of those things that are conjoined together as of an odd number it escapes their notice however that not accurately are the definitions of these things expressed by them but if there are definitions of these things also doubtless in a different way do they subsist or as has been affirmed definition must be spoken of as subsisting in many ways and so with the essence or the very nature of a thing likewise wherefore in one way there will not be a definition of any of these nor will essence be inherent in any one of these save in substances and in another way they will be inherent that therefore indeed definition is a discursus or description of the very nature or essence of a thing and that the essence or formal principle belongs either to substances only or especially both primarily and simply is manifest end of chapter five of book six recording in memory of mitchell edwards chapter six of book six of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter six let us now consider whether the essence or very nature of a thing and each individual thing are the same or different for 
this will be of advantage in reference to the inquiry concerning substance for both each particular thing does not seem to be different from its own substance and the essence or very nature of each thing is said to be the substance of that thing therefore in the case no doubt of things that are predicated according to accident these would seem to be different as that a white man is a thing different from the being of white man for if they were the same both the being of man and the being of white man would be the same for man and white man as they say are the same thing wherefore also the being of a white man and the being of man would be the same or is there no necessity for whatever things that are according to accident to be the same as those things that have an essential subsistence for not in like manner do the extremes become the same but perhaps at least it would seem to happen that the extremes should become the same according to accident as for instance the being of white and the being of a musician but this does not seem to be the case and as regards things that are predicated absolutely there always is a necessity that they be the same as must take place if there are certain substances belonging to which there are not different substances nor different antecedent natures such as some affirm ideas to be for if the actual good be a different thing from the being good and animal from the being animal and entity from the essence of entity there will exist both different substances and natures and ideas besides those mentioned and those substances will be prior if there be in existence the essence of substance and if they are indeed unconnected one with another of such there will not be a scientific knowledge and they will not be entities now i mean by the phrase quote, unconnected close quote, if neither in the actual good is inherent the being good nor if the existence of good pertains to this for the scientific knowledge of each thing subsists when we know the essence or very nature of each thing and in the case of what is good and of other things the same takes place wherefore if the being good be not good neither will the being in entity constitute entity nor that in unity be unity in like manner also all or not one of the essences will have an existence wherefore if neither it be so with the being in entity neither will it be so with anything else further in whatever is not inherent the being good is not good accordingly it is necessary that the good and the being of good be one also the fair and the being fair in fact whatsoever things are not predicated of another but have an absolute subsistence and are things which are primary for also this is sufficient if it takes place even though forms may have no existence but rather perhaps if forms do subsist but at the same time it is evident that also if ideas are such things as some say they are the subject of them will not be substance for it is necessary that these be substances i admit but it is not necessary that they be predicated of a subject for in this will they be inherent by participation and doubtless from these arguments it is evident that each particular itself and the essence not according to accident are one and the same thing and that to have a scientific knowledge at any rate of anything is to know scientifically the very nature or essence of that thing wherefore according to this exposition it is requisite that both be a certain one thing but that a thing predicated according to accident as the musical or white should be the same as the very nature of a thing itself on account of the twofold signification of that in which it is an accident and the accident itself this is not a true assertion so that in a certain respect a thing itself is the same and in a certain respect is not the same with the very nature of that thing for the being of man is not the same with that of a white man but so far as the essence of man is passive to whiteness it is the same 
now it would appear absurd also if any would impose the name on each thing of the essences for there will be another essence besides also that as besides the essence of horse there will be a different essence of horse although what hinders certain essences even from being now directly the same as the things of which they are the very natures if the very nature of a thing be substance but truly not only are they one but also the definition of them is the same as is also evident from the statements that have been made for to be one and one are not according to accident further if they be different they will go on in a progression ad infinitum for the one will be the essence of being one but the other the one itself wherefore also in the case of those will there be the same definition that therefore in the case of the first existences and of things predicated essentially the being of each thing and that very thing itself are one and the same thing is evident as regards however the refutations of the sophists in reference to this position it is palpable that they are decided by the same solution for example these sophists inquire whether socrates and the being socrates are the same for there is no difference in the things either from which one would ask the question or from which he should light upon an answer in his attempted solution of it how then the essence or very nature is the same and how it is not the same with each particular thing has been declared chapter seven now of things that are being produced some are produced by nature and others by art and others from chance all things however that are produced are produced by means of something and from something and become something but i mean that they become something according to each category for they are generated either as quiddity or quantity or quality or the place where but generations the physical or natural ones i mean are those unquestionably of which the generation is from nature and that from which they are generated is that which we denominate matter but that by means of which they are generated belongs to some one of those things which have a subsistence by nature and that which is some particular thing is man or plant or some one of the things of that sort which we affirm to be especially substances now all things which are produced either by nature or art involve matter for it is possible for each of them both to be and not to be this capability however is the matter in each and in general nature is even that from which a thing proceeds and that according to which entities are generated is nature likewise for that which is being produced has a nature as for example a plant or animal and that by means of which a thing is generated is nature herself which is predicated according to the species and is of the same species but this is inherent in another for man begets man in this way therefore are produced the things that are generated through nature and the rest of the generations are denominated productions or operations all operations however are either from art or from potentiality or the understanding but of these some are produced also from chance and from fortune in a similar way as in the case of those things that are produced by nature for there also are produced some things that are the same both from seed and without seed respecting indeed these then we will subsequently institute an examination from art however are generated those things of whatsoever there is a form in the soul but i mean by form the essence or very nature of each thing and the first substance for also of contraries in a certain manner is there the same form for thus the substance of privation is the substance that is the one opposed as health of disease for by the absence of health is disease made apparent and health constitutes the principle in the soul and in the science the salubrious however is produced when the physician reasons thus since this is done for the sake of health it is necessary if this will be salubrious that this particular condition should exist for example evenness 
and if this take place that the result be heat and so he always reasons until he conducts you to that which he himself can accomplish last accordingly now the motion which begins from these is called the operation that tends towards becoming healthy wherefore it happens that in a certain manner from health is generated health and a house is constructed from a house namely that which involves matter arises or is generated from that which does not involve a connection with matter for the medicinal and the house-building arts are the form the one of health and the other of a house now i mean by substance not involving any connection with matter the essence or very nature or formal cause of a thing of generations however and of motions one is termed thought and another operation that is termed conception or thought which arises from the first principle and the form but that is operation which takes its rise from the thought or conception of what is ultimate in like manner also is produced each of the rest of those things that are media now i say for instance if health is to be restored there must needs be a reduction to equality secured what then is this reduction into a state of equality it is this particular result but this particular result will take place if heat shall have been promoted and what is this it is this particular effect now this effect is inherent in capacity but the former already lies in the power of the physician now that which brings about the result and whence the motion of restoring health derives its beginning if it springs from art such is the form that is in the soul but if it arises from chance it arises from that evidently which for once is the principle of bringing about the change to one that acts from art as also perhaps in the case of restoring health the first principle originates from the communication of heat and this result is accomplished by means of friction accordingly heat is either a part of health i mean such heat as inheres in the body or there follows it directly some such thing as is a part of health or this is accomplished indirectly that is by means of many media this last however is that which produces the result and in this way is part of health as stones are parts of a house and something else a part of other things wherefore as it is said it is impossible that there be a production of anything if nothing may pre-exist that certainly therefore a portion will exist necessarily is evident for matter is that part for this is inherent and is itself produced but then as such is it to be classed amongst those things that are contained in the definition and in both ways we denominate the brazen circles what they are speaking of both the matter that it is brass and the form that it is such a figure and this is the genus into which it is first posited but a brazen circle involves matter in its definition but that from which as from matter some things are formed is styled when it is so formed not that from which they are formed but is called something else that is of this as for example a statue is called not a stone but of stone or stony and a man who is in a state of convalescence is not denominated that from which he recovers back his health and a cause of this is the following that that arises from privation and the subject which we call matter as both a man and a person that is indisposed become healthy rather however is health said to arise from privation as one in health from one that is indisposed then from man wherefore a sick person is not denominated as one that is sound in health but this is affirmed of man and a man who is in sound health and in regard of those things of which the privation is obscure and nameless as in the case of the brass whatever be the figure or in the bricks and timbers of a house those things seem to arise from these as in the instance above adduced one that is in health from a person that is indisposed 
wherefore as neither that which is produced is called by the name of that from which it is formed in the case of the instance above adduced so neither in this instance is the statue called wood but derivatively is classified as wooden not wood and as brazen but not brass and stony but not stone and a house also is spoken of as made of bricks but not as bricks since if one carefully examines he would not say absolutely that either is the statue produced from wood or a house from bricks on account of its being necessary that whatever is produced from anything should be changed from that from which it is produced but should not continue as it was before therefore on account of this indeed the thing is expressed in this manner chapter eight since however that which is produced is produced both by something now i mean that whence also originates the first principle of generation that is its efficient cause and from something but let this be not privation but matter for already has it been defined in what manner we have denominated this also must there be that which is produced and this is either a sphere or a circle or whatever else of the other things that may chance to present itself as neither the efficient cause produces the subject i mean the brass so neither does it make the sphere unless by accident because a brazen sphere is a sphere but it does not produce the sphere itself for the production of a certain thing of this kind is the production of this particular thing from the entire subject now i say that to make the brass round is not to make the round or the sphere but something different such as this form in another thing for if the artist produces it he would produce this from something else for this would be the subject as for example to make a brazen sphere and this the artist makes in this manner because from this particular thing which is brass he forms this which is a sphere if therefore also he produces this very thing it is evident that in like manner he will produce another and the productions will go on in a process ad infinitum it is palpable then that neither form or by whatever name we must needs term form as it subsists in that which is cognizable to sense is produced nor is there a generation thereof nor is this the essence or very nature of a thing for this is that which is produced in another subject either from art or from nature or potentiality and the efficient cause it is which produces the existence of a brazen sphere for it produces it from brass and a sphere for into this particular thing which is the form doth the efficient cause mould the brass and this constitutes a brazen sphere and if in short of the being or existence of sphere there exists a generation it will be a something that is a generation from a certain thing for it will be necessary that what is produced always be divisible and that this should be this particular thing and that should be something else now i mean that this should be matter and that form therefore if a sphere be a figure equal from the centre to all points of its periphery of this one part will be that in which that which produces will be inherent and the other part that which resides in this part but the whole is that which has been produced or generated as for instance the brazen sphere it is evident therefore from the statements that have been made that what is denominated as form or as substance is not generated but that the union which is said to take place according to this is generated and that in everything which is being produced matter is inherent and that one part is matter but the other form whether then is there any sphere besides these components or is there a house besides the bricks or shall we say that if this were the case neither would this particular thing ever have been produced save that it signifies a particular thing of this sort this however also is not defined but it produces and generates such a particular kind of thing from this particular thing and when it has been generated it is this particular thing with such a quality 
and the whole of this particular thing is callias or socrates just as this is a brazen sphere and man and animal are in general as the brazen sphere it is evident therefore that the cause of forms as some have been accustomed to denominate forms if there are certain natures of this sort in existence besides singulars in no wise is useful towards both generations and substances nor would essential substances have a subsistence on account of these at least it is accordingly evident that in the case of some things also the generator is such as that which is being produced or generated not i admit the actual thing itself at least not so numerically but specifically as may be observed to take place in natural phenomena for man generates man unless something abnormal or contrary to nature be produced as when a horse begets a mule and with these is it in like manner for that which would be common to a horse and an ass namely the most proximate genus would not have a name imposed upon it but both perhaps would be as a mule wherefore it is plain that it is in no wise necessary to provide a form as an exemplar or model for in these that is in things sensible especially investigators from time to time have searched for them for these same in an eminent degree are substances but for the generator it sufficeth to have produced and to be the cause of the subsistence of form in matter and the entire now of such a form in these things such as flesh and bones is callias and socrates and different no doubt is a thing on account of the matter thereof for matter in each thing is different but in form it is the same for the form is indivisible chapter nine some one however may doubt perhaps why some things are produced by both art and from chance as health but other things are not produced in this way as a house now a cause of this is the following that the matter of these which is the first principle of generation consists in the accomplishing and the production of something of those things that are artificially formed in which there is inherent a certain portion of the thing which matter is partly of such a kind as is capable of being moved by itself and partly is not so and of this one part is it possible to move in this particular way but the other it is not possible for many things involve the capacity of being moved by themselves but not in this way for instance to leap as regards those things therefore of which the matter is of such a kind as stones it is impossible for them to be moved in this way unless by something else yet in this way assuredly and it is so with fire on account of this some things will not be without that which is in possession of art whereas other things will be for they will be moved by those things which do not possess art no doubt but are themselves capable of being moved either by other things which do not possess art or possess it partially but it is evident from the statements that have been made that also all things in a certain manner are generated from things that are equivocal as those that have a subsistence from nature or from an equivocal portion for example a house from a house or by reason of intellect for art is form either from a part or from that which possesses a certain part if it be not produced according to accident for the cause of the production is an essential first portion for the heat which is involved in motion has generated heat in the body and this is unquestionably health or a part of health or there follows it a certain part of health or health itself wherefore also it is said to be a producer because that produces health on which heat follows and to which it is an accident wherefore as in the syllogisms substance is the first principle of all things for from the nature of a thing are syllogisms so also in this instance are generations and in like manner also with these are those things that are by nature constituted for the seed produces as things that are constructed from art for it involves form in capacity 
and that from which the seed originates is in a manner equivocal for it is not necessary to investigate all things in this way as man is from man for woman also is from man wherefore mule does not originate from mule save unless there be an injury from mutilation thus as many things however as are being produced from chance just as in that instance are those the matter of which is capable also of being moved by itself with that motion which the seed effects but those things the matter of which does not possess this capability it is impossible can be produced in any other way except from themselves by generation not only however does this reasoning concerning substance manifest the non-production of form but in like manner concerning all that are primary natures there is involved the same reasoning in common as of quantity quality and the rest of the categories for as the brazen sphere is what is produced but not the sphere or the brass and as it is so in the case of brass if it is what is produced for always it is necessary that there pre-exist matter and form so also must it be in the case of quote, the what anything is close quote, or quiddity and in the case of quality and quantity and similarly of the rest of the categories for there quality is not produced but such a sort of quality of wood neither quantity but such a measure or quantity of wood or an animal of such a kind but from these statements may we acquire what is a peculiarity of substance namely that there is a necessity that there should always pre-exist a different substance i mean one subsisting in a state of actuality which produces as for instance an animal must pre-exist if an animal is produced but this is not necessarily the case with quality or quantity unless in potentiality merely End of chapter 9 of book 6 Recording in memory of Mitchell Edwards Chapter 10 of book 6 of Metaphysics by Aristotle Translated by John McMahon This LibriVox recording is in the public domain Recording by Geoffrey Edwards chapter ten but since definition is a sentence or explanation and every sentence or explanation has parts and as a sentence is similarly related to the thing itself as the part of the sentence to the part of the thing itself the doubt now suggests itself whether it is necessary that the definition of the parts should be inherent in the definition of the whole or not in the case of some things they appear to be as things that are inherent but in the case of others it is not so for thus the definition of a circle does not involve that of its segments but the definition of a syllable involves that of the letters of speech notwithstanding that the circle also is divided into segments as likewise is the syllable into letters or elements of speech but further if the parts are prior to the whole and if the acute be a part of the right angle and the finger of an animal the acute would be a thing that is prior to a right angle and the finger to man now these do not seem to be prior for in the definition they are denominated from them and also are they prior in their being capable of subsistence without one another or shall we say that part is denominated in many ways of which one mode is the measurement according to quantity let however the mode of the subsistence of this be omitted but into those things of which substance is composed as from parts we must institute an investigation if therefore the one be matter but the other form and the third that which is composed of these and if substance be both matter and form and that which consists from these it is the case that also matter is termed in one respect a part of something but it is the case that such is not so in another respect 
but this is true as regards those things of which the definition of form consists as for instance of hollowness indeed the flesh is not a portion for this is matter from which hollowness is produced but it is a certain portion of flatness of nose and of the entire statue no doubt is the brass a part but of that which is denominated as the form of the statue it is not so for by form must we predicate and so far forth as everything involves form never however is the material to be essentially predicated wherefore the definition of a circle does not involve that of its segments but that of a syllable does involve the definition of the elements of speech for the elements of the definition are parts of form and are not the matter thereof but the segments of a circle thus are parts as matter in which the circle is ingenerated they are i admit nearer to form than the brass when roundness is ingenerated in the brass but it will be the case that neither all the elements of the syllable will be contained in the definition of syllable as for instance these waxen letters or those which are in the air for now also are these a part of the syllable as sensible matter for also it does not follow that because a line if divided into halves is corrupted or a man when divided into bones and nerves and flesh that therefrom they are in such a manner on this account composed as though they were parts of the substance but that they are composed from them as from matter and they are parts of the entire to be sure but they are not any longer parts of form and of that about which the definition is concerned only wherefore neither are they found in definitions of some definitions indeed therefore will there be inherent the definition of parts of this kind and of others it is necessary that it be not inherent unless such be the definition of that which is taken together for on this account from these as from first principles do some things consist into which they are corrupted and others do not consist from these whatever things indeed therefore are assumed together are form and matter as a flat nose or a brazen circle those are corrupted into these and matter constitutes a portion of them but as many things as are not assumed along with matter but involve no connection with matter as the definitions of form merely these however are not corrupted either entirely or by no means in this way at least wherefore things that fall not under these are the first principles and parts of those but of the form are these neither parts nor first principles and on this account a statue of clay is corrupted into clay and a sphere of brass into brass and callius into flesh and bones and further a circle is corrupted into its segments for there is something which is assumed along with matter for equivocally is the circle predicated both that which is predicated simply and those that are singulars on account of there not being a proper name for singulars therefore indeed also has the truth now been declared yet nevertheless let us express ourselves more clearly on resuming the subject as many things therefore as are parts of the definition and into which the definition is divided these are prior either all or some of them but the definition of a right angle is not divided into the definition of an acute but that of an acute angle is divided into the definition of a right angle for a person who defines an acute employs a right angle for the acute is less than the right in like manner also is it the case with a circle and semicircle for the semicircle is defined by the circle and the finger by the whole for such a part of a man is a finger wherefore whatsoever parts involve such a relation as matter and into which as into matter the whole is divided are things subsequent but as many as belong to the relation of definition and of substance which subsists according to the definition are things that are prior either all or some of them now since the soul of animals for this is the substance of that which is animated constitutes the substance according to definition and their form and the very nature or essence of such a body if at least 
the part of each thing be properly defined it will not be properly defined without mention of its appropriate function and this in the present case will not subsist without sense wherefore the parts of this that is of soul are prior either all or some of them to the entire animal and doubtless similarly is it with an individual thing but the body and its parts are subsequent to this substance and the substance is not divided into these as into matter but the entire is to the entire therefore these are in a manner prior but in a manner are not prior for neither are they capable of subsisting in a state of separation for neither does finger belong to an animal when disposed in every way but equivocally so termed is a dead finger now some things perish along with the whole and these are principal parts wherein as first are inherent the definition and the substance as for instance the heart or brain if such be the principal part for it makes no difference which of these is of such a kind but man and horse and those that are so are found in singulars and an universal substance does not subsist but there will be a certain entirety composed from this reason or formal principle and this matter as an universal but as regards a singular consisting from ultimate matter this is socrates in the present instance and the case is similar with other things therefore also is definition a portion both of the form but by form i mean the essence or very nature of a thing and of the universal that is composed from form and matter itself but the parts of definition are only the parts of form but a definition is of that which is universal for the being of a circle and a circle and the being of a soul and a soul are the same thing and of that which is entire now as of this circle of any of the singulars either sensible or intelligible now i mean by the intelligible for example the mathematical but by the sensible such as are made of brass and wood of these however i say there is no definition save that they are known by the intervention of the intellect or sense and when they are removed away from actuality it is not evident whether they exist at all or do not exist yet they are always expressed and made known by universal definition but the matter is unknown in itself now matter is partly sensible and partly intelligible that which is sensible is such as brass and wood and such as is movable but intelligible matter is that which is inherent in things that are sensible but not so far forth as they are sensible as mathematical entities how indeed therefore this is so respecting the whole and part and respecting the prior and subsequent has been declared but as to whether a right angle and a circle and an animal are prior to the parts into which they are divided and of which they are composed my reply to this question when any one puts it must necessarily be that not simply or absolutely are the parts predicated for if also soul is an animal or that which is animated every animal is each animal's own soul and if the circle constitute the being of a circle and the right angle the being of the right angle and the substance also the substance of the right angle what particular thing and belonging to what as a substance each of these is we must state on a subsequent occasion for instance of those parts that are contained in the definition and of a certain right angle for both the angle of brass which subsists in conjunction with matter is a right angle and that also contained within lines i mean singular lines but a right angle that involves no connection with matter is subsequent to those parts that are contained in the definition and prior to those parts that are contained in the singular but this is not to be affirmed of part absolutely and if soul be something that is different and does not constitute an animal in this case must we both assert some parts to be prior and other parts we must assert to be not prior just as has been declared chapter eleven but it is a matter of doubt naturally what is the quality of the parts of form and what sort the parts are not but what kind the parts are which belong to a composite nature 
although in case this is not evident it is not possible to define each thing for of that which is universal and of form is there the definition as to which therefore of the parts are related as matter and which are not so if these be not manifest neither will be manifest the definition of the thing as many things indeed therefore as appear to be ingenerated in the form of different things as a circle in brass and stone and wood these then seem to be manifest because neither the brass nor the stone is anything of the substance of the circle consequent upon its separation from them but as many things as are not perceived to be separated there is no hindrance to their being similarly disposed with these as if all circles were seen composed of brass for nevertheless would the brass be in no wise a part of form but it would be difficult in thought to abstract this as for instance the form of man always appears in flesh and bones and in such like parts are these then also parts of form and of the definition or are they not so but matter merely but on account of its not being ingenerated in another also we find it impossible to separate it and since this seems to be admissible yet as to the time when this is obscure certain philosophers now are involved in doubt in the case both of a circle and in the case of a triangle as if it were not fitting for lines and that which is contained within lines also to be defined by continuity but that all should be predicated in a similar manner with the flesh or bones of a man and the brass and stone of a statue and they refer all things to numbers and the definition of a line they say is that of the duad of those likewise who assert the existence of ideas some make the actual line the duad but others the form of the line for in regard of some things they say that form and that of which the form is compounded are the same as for instance a duad and the form of the duad but in the case of a line it is not so there happens therefore to be one form of many things of which the species appears to be different which consequence also ensued in their system unto the pythagoreans and it is possible as a result from this position to make one actual form of all things and that other things be not forms at all although on this supposition will all things be one that therefore those things involve a certain doubt i mean those questions that have been started respecting definitions and from what cause it is that they are thus attended with difficulty this has been declared wherefore both to reduce all things in this way and to abstract matter would be superfluous for in the case of some things perhaps this is in this or these things are so disposed and the comparison that is made in the case of an animal which the junior socrates was accustomed to employ is not a good one for it forcibly withdraws one away from the truth and makes us suppose as possible that man should subsist without parts as a circle without brass but this latter instance is not similar to the former for animal perhaps is something that is cognizant by sense and which cannot be defined without motion wherefore neither can it be defined without the parts somehow disposed for not altogether is the hand a part of a man but that which is able to accomplish the proper function of a hand wherefore when it is animated it is a part but when it is not animated it is not a part respecting however mathematical entities why are not definitions parts of the definitions of such for example why are not semicircles parts of the definition of a circle for these are not sensibles or shall we say that this makes no difference for they will be the matter of certain things and of those that are not sensible and of everything that is not the very nature or essence of a thing these then will not be the parts of universal circle but of singulars as has been stated previously for matter is partly sensible and partly intelligible and it is evident also that the soul is the first substance and that body is matter but man or animal is the compound of both as universal if the soul however be the form of such 
socrates and coriscus are twofold for some regard socrates as soul but others as an entirety but if they be considered as this soul regarded simply this body also will involve the relation of the universal and of the singular whether however beside the matter of such sort of substances there is any other substance and whether it is necessary to search for any different substance of these as for instance numbers or some such thing must afterwards be examined into for on account of this let us also endeavour to frame some distinctions respecting sensible substances since in a certain manner the investigation regarding sensible substance is a work of the physical and second philosophy for not only is it necessary for the natural philosopher to afford information respecting matter but also respecting that substance which subsists according to the definition even still more in the case however of definitions in what manner are those parts which are assumed in the definition and why definition is one reason for it is evident that the thing is one and that the thing is in a certain way one definite particular which involves parts this must subsequently be inquired into what therefore is the essence of a thing and how this subsists in itself that is absolutely has been declared respecting everything universally and why the definition of the essence of some things possesses the parts of that which is defined but in other things why this is not the case and why that in the definition indeed of substance the parts so constituted as matter are not inherent this likewise has been declared for they are not parts of that substance but of the entire together and of this there is at least in a manner a definition and there is not so for as involving a connection with matter there is not a definition for it is a thing that is indefinite but according to the first substance there is as for instance the definition of man is the definition of his soul for the substance constitutes form that is such as is indwelling from which and from matter the entire substance is denominated as for example hollowness or concavity for from this and nose a flat nose and flatness are composed for therein twice will the nose be inherent in the substance however in its entirety as in a flat nose or callous is matter also inherent and that the essence or very nature of a thing and a singular in the case of some things are the same as in the case of primary substances for instance a curvature and the essence of a curvature if it is primary that these i say are the same this has been declared now i mean by primary or first that which is not expressed in respect of one thing being inherent in another and in a subject as matter but as many things as subsist as matter or as things involving a connection with matter these are not the same except that they are one according to accident as socrates and the musical for these are the same according to accident chapter twelve let us now however first discuss the subject so far forth as there has been no statement made concerning definition in the analytics for the doubt that has been expressed in those inquiries is of advantage to our present dissertations respecting substance now this doubt which i allude to is as follows quote, why pray a thing that is capable of definition of which the reason we say is a definition is one thing as the definition of man is a two-footed animal for let this stand as a definition of him Close quote. now why is this one thing but not many animal and two-footed for also in the case of man and white they are many things when they are not inherent either in the other but when the one is inherent in the other and when the subject viz man undergoes any passive condition they are one for then a white man becomes and is one thing here however either does not partake of the other for genus does not appear to participate in the differences for in such a case would the same thing at the same time participate in contraries for differences are contraries wherein the genus differs 
and if the genus does participate in the differences the same reasoning holds good even though the differences be many in number for instance having the capability of walking biped without wings for why are these things one but not many for they are not one because they are inherent for so indeed will there be one of all but it is requisite that at any rate as many things as are contained in definition should be one for definition is a certain single principle or reason and belongs to substance wherefore of one particular thing this must needs be a definition for also substance signifies one certain particular thing as we say and it is necessary first to examine respecting those definitions which subsist according to divisions for there is nothing else involved in definition unless the genus that is denominated first and the differences but the other things are genera both that which is first and the differences comprehended along with this as for instance the first genus is animal and that next in order to this is two-footed animal and again two-footed animal without wings and in like manner will it be the case if the definition be expressed by means of many distinctive qualities in general however there is no difference whether it subsists by many such or by few or by two of them yet if a thing be defined by two distinctive qualities the one will be difference and the other genus as for instance of two-footed animal animal is the genus and the other two-footed is the difference if therefore genus simply considered is not anything different from the species as it were of that genus or if indeed it is yet it is as matter for voice is genus and matter but the differences produce the forms and elements out of this it is evident in such a case that a definition is a sentence or discursus composed from differences but therefore is it necessary likewise that the difference of the difference should at least be divided as for example a difference belonging to animal such as having the support of feet again it is requisite to know the difference of the animal that possesses the differential quality of being supported on feet as far forth as it is such i mean such as has the support of feet wherefore it is not proper to say that of an animal which has the support of feet one sort we find with wings and another without them if one is to express himself correctly but on account of the impossibility of making a proper division of the distinctive qualities will one do this but it is correct to say so if one kind has cloven and another has feet that are not cloven for these are the differences of foot for a cloven foot is a certain quality of foot and so always does one desire to go on making divisions of distinctive qualities until we come to things that do not involve any difference but then will there be as many species of foot as there are differences and the number of animals with feet supporting them will be equal to the differences now if these things are so it is evident that the ultimate difference will be the substance of the thing and the definition of it if it is not necessary to say oftentimes the same things in the case of definitions for it would be superfluous but this at least happens sometimes for when one calls an animal that has feet supporting it a biped he has said no more than this viz that an animal having the support of feet has two feet and if he make a division of this by an appropriate difference he will say the same thing frequently and in an equal number of times with the differences if indeed therefore a difference of a difference may be produced one which is the ultimate difference will constitute form and substance if however the division be made according to accident as if one should make a division in the case of the classes of that which has the support of feet of one into white and another into black so many differences or distinctive qualities will there be as there may be divisions of them wherefore it is evident that definition is a sentence that is composed from the things that are differences and from the last of these that is drawn up in accordance with a correct classification at least
and this would be plain if one should transpose the arrangement of the terms of definitions of this kind as for example that of a man saying instead of the ordinary definition animal biped having the support of feet for superfluous would be the distinctive quality of having the support of feet on the supposition of the thing defined being denominated a biped an arrangement of terms however does not exist in substance for how is it necessary to understand the one as subsequent but the other as prior respecting then definitions that subsist according to divisions of the distinctive qualities of the things defined what sort they are let thus much in the first instance be affirmed end of chapter twelve of book six recording in memory of mitchell edwards chapter thirteen of book six of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter thirteen but since our present investigation is concerning substance let us once more take a review of the matter now substance is said to subsist as the subject and the essence or very nature of a thing and that which is composed from these is termed substance and that which is universal respecting indeed then two of them have we declared our opinions already for also we have done so in the case of the essence or very nature of a thing and the subject observing that in two ways it is a subject either as being this certain particular thing as an animal is the subject of its passive states or it is as matter in a condition of actuality but to some speculators doth the universal in an eminent degree appear to be a cause and the universal appears to be a first principle also wherefore likewise as regards this point must we institute an inquiry for it seems to be a thing impossible that substance should be anything whatsoever of those things that are denominated universal for primary substance to be sure in everything is that which does not belong to another thing that which is universal however is common for that is said to be universal which by nature is fitted to be inherent in many things of what then will this be a substance for either it will be a substance of all things or of nothing but of all things it is not even possible that it should be a substance and if it be the substance of one thing other things also will be this for those things of which the substance is one and the essence or very nature one will themselves likewise be one further is that denominated substance which is not predicated of a subject the universal however is invariably predicated of a certain subject but then shall we say that it is not possible certainly that it should subsist in such a way as the essence or very nature of a thing but that it be inherent in this for example animal in man and horse therefore is it evident that there will be a certain definition of it but there is no difference either if there is not a definition of all those things that are contained in the substance for this nevertheless will be a substance of something as man is the substance of man wherein man is inherent wherefore the same consequence will again ensue for substance will be substance of man as for instance animal is substance in that species in which it is inherent as a peculiar property and further the thing would be both impossible and absurd that this particular thing and substance if they are composed from certain things should not consist of substances or of anything of the sort but from quality for that which is not substance and quality will be prior both to substance and this particular thing an assertion that is impossible for neither in definition nor in time nor in generation is it possible likewise that the passive properties of a thing should be prior to the substance of it for they will involve a subsistence separable from it 
moreover in socrates who is a substance will substance be inherent wherefore will socrates be a substance in two substances and in general the result following ensues if man is substance and as many things as are thus expressed that none of those things contained in definition is substance of anything and that it has not a subsistence separable from them nor does it subsist in another now i mean for example that there is not any animal besides those certain particular ones or anything else of those things that are contained in the definitions now from these considerations also it is evident to persons examining into the subject that nothing of those things that have an universal subsistence is substance and that nothing of those things that are predicated in common signifies this certain particular thing but a thing of such a quality and if this be not admitted many other consequences also will ensue and amongst the rest the consequence that there will be a third man further also it is evident that the case stands thus from the following remark for it is impossible that substance should be compounded from substances which are inherent in such a manner as to subsist in actuality for two things thus would subsist in actuality yet they never would be one thing in actuality but if they may be two things in potentiality they will be one as the twofold is compounded of two halves at least in potentiality for actuality in the case of others separates them wherefore if the substance be one thing it will not be compounded from substances that are inherent and subsisting according to that mode which democritus mentions correctly for it is impossible he says that from two atoms should be generated one or two from one for he makes magnitudes that are indivisible to be substances therefore is it plain that also in the case of number this will take place in a similar manner if number be a composition of monads as is said by some speculators for either the duad is not one or it is not the monad that is involved in this actuality but the result which ensues contains a matter of doubt for if neither from the universals is it possible that any substance be compounded on account of an animal signifying a thing of such a sort but not this certain particular thing neither is it possible that there subsists any substance from substances in actuality i mean that no composite nature can thus subsist now on such a supposition every substance would be a thing that is uncompounded wherefore neither would there be a definition of any substance but assuredly it seems at least to all speculators and has been laid down originally that definition is conversant about substance either solely or principally but now the conclusion drawn is this that neither is there definition of this that is of substance nor will there be a definition of any one thing in such a case or shall we say that in a certain manner there will be and in a certain manner there will not be a definition of substance what however that is which is affirmed will be more manifest from the sequel chapter fourteen now from these very circumstances is evident the result which ensues to those both who say that ideas are as well substances as separable substances and who at the same time constitute form out of the genus and the differences for if forms and animal exist in man and in horse there is undoubtedly one and the same or a different animal in number for by definition it is evident that there is one and the same for the same definition does he assign who says that they are inherent in each if therefore there is some man an actual thing subsisting essentially that is this certain particular individual thing and one which has a separate subsistence it is necessary also that those things from which they are composed as for example animal and biped should signify this certain particular individual thing and should involve a separable subsistence and be substances wherefore also this will be the case with animal if therefore animal will be the same and one thing in horse and man 
as yourself in yourself how will it be one in things that subsist separately and why will not this animal subsist likewise apart from itself if in the next place it will participate in the properties of two-footed and many-footed something which is impossible ensues for contraries at the same time will be inherent in this which is one thing and this certain particular thing and if this is not the case what is the mode of subsistence when one affirms that an animal is two-footed or adapted for walking perchance however they are composites and are in contact with one another or have been mingled together but all such suppositions as to the mode of subsistence in this case are absurd shall we say however that in each thing there subsists something that is different therefore to speak the word those things will be infinite of which the substance is animal for not according to accident is man from animal moreover many things will animal itself be for animal which is contained in each individual is substance for it is not predicated of anything else and if this be not admitted from that will man subsist and that will be a genus of man and further all things from which man consists will be ideas therefore idea will not be an idea of one thing but a substance of another for this is impossible for in such a case each of those things that are contained in animals will be an animal itself further will it subsist from this certain particular thing and how will it subsist from this actual animal or how is it possible that animal should subsist which is substance as this very thing beside animal itself further also in the case of sensibles both these consequences ensue and consequences still more absurd than these if therefore it is impossible that this can be the case it is evident that there is not an idea of them after such a mode as some would affirm chapter fifteen but since both entirety and the formal cause are a different substance now i say that the former is substance in this way as the formal cause that is comprehended along with matter and that the latter is the formal cause in general in regard of as many things then as are so denominated of these truly is their corruption for of these also is their generation with form however there is not a disruption of parts in such a way as for dissolution to ensue for neither exists their generation in this case for the being of a house is not generated but the being of this particular house but form subsist without any connection with generation and corruption and do not subsist in a state of dependence upon either for it has been demonstrated that no one generates or produces these and on this account also of sensible substances i mean such as are singulars there is neither definition nor demonstration because they involve matter the nature of which is such as to admit of the possibility both of being and not being wherefore all the singulars of such are things subject to decay or corruption if therefore also demonstration be of those things that are necessary as well as that which is a scientific definition and if it does not admit of being the case as neither with scientific knowledge that at one time it should be scientific knowledge and at another time should be ignorance but a thing of this kind is opinion so neither is it to be admitted that demonstration nor definition should subsist after this mode but such is an opinion in regard of that which admits of being disposed otherwise it is evident therefore that there would not be either definition or demonstration of those things that may subsist differently for also things that are subject to corruption or decay are obscure to those even that are in possession of scientific knowledge when they pass away from under the notice of sense and though the same reasons or principles be preserved in the soul still will there not further exist thereof either definition or demonstration wherefore as regards things relating to definition when one defines any of the singulars it is right that he should not be ignorant that always is it possible to overturn this definition for a thing of this sort does not admit of definition neither therefore is it possible for any idea to be defined 
for the idea ranks amongst singulars as they say and has likewise a separable subsistence and it is necessary also that definition consist from names but the person who is framing the definition will not create a name or nominative term for it will be a thing unknown the things however that are posited or acknowledged are common to all it is necessary then that these also subsist in other things for instance even just as if one should define yourself he would say that you are an animal which is attenuated or white or something else that will be inherent also in another if any one however would say that there is no hindrance to all things being separately inherent in many but that all collectively belong to this alone we must in the first place say that also they would belong to both namely animal biped to animal and biped and this must needs ensue likewise in the case of things that are everlasting since at any rate they are prior existences and are parts of that which is a composite but assuredly also are they separable if the thing man be separable for either nothing will be separable or both will be so if indeed then nothing may possess the capacity of a separate subsistence there will not exist genus besides species but if both are separable there will exist the difference likewise in the next place because they are prior existences in respect of being these also on the contrary will not be exposed to decay and then if ideas spring from ideas for more uncompounded are those things from which other composites arise it will be necessary that those things from which the idea consists should be predicated further of many for instance take the case of animal and biped but if this be not admitted how shall a knowledge of these be attained for there will be a certain idea which it will be impossible to predicate in the case of more things than one this does not however seem to be the case but every idea appears to be participable as therefore it has been declared it is overlooked by these persons that it is impossible to frame any definitions or distinctions in the case of things that are eternal and eminently in the case of as many things as are single for instance the sun and moon for not only do persons err in the addition of things of this sort in the event of which being taken away still the sun will continue as that body which revolves round the earth or which is hid by night for if the sun were to stand still in his orbit or were to become apparent by night in such a case no longer will he be the sun but the thing would be absurd if he were not for the sun signifies a certain substance further such persons take for granted whatsoever points admit of being affirmed of another thing just as if something else should become a thing of this sort it is evident that it will be the sun the definition then is common but the sun was classed amongst singulars in such a way as cleon or socrates whereas why does no one of these bring forward a definition of idea for it would become manifest to those who would attempt to prove the existence of such that what is now stated is true chapter sixteen it is evident also that likewise the majority of those things which seem substances are capacities and parts of animals for none of these involves a separate subsistence but when they may be separated then also are they all of them as matter i mean such as both earth and fire and air for none of these is one thing but each as it were a heap of immatured things before they be digested and some one thing produced from their being blended together but particularly would one suppose the parts of animated beings and those of the soul to be both of them contiguous to an existence in this manner as well in actuality as also in capacity in respect of having the first principles of motion from something in their joints or flexures wherefore some animals continue to retain life after being divided but nevertheless will all of them subsist in capacity when they may be one thing and that which is continuous by nature but not by force or by connaissance that is growth in conjunction with something else 
for a thing of this kind is mutilation since however unity is denominated as also entity is and since the substance of unity is single and those things of which there is one substance in number are one in number it is evident that neither unity nor entity can possibly be the substance of things as neither can the being of an element or first principle be the substance of things but we are actually engaged in the inquiry what therefore the first principle is in order to conduct our investigation to that which is more known the substance then indeed of these is rather entity and unity than both the first principle and the element and the cause but by no means are these substances either if there be not anything else which is in common with substance for in nothing is the substance inherent but in itself and in that which is in possession of itself of which it is the substance further unity would not subsist in many places at the same time that which is common however does subsist in many places at the same time wherefore it is evident that nothing of those things that are universals can possess a subsistence separate from singulars but they who affirm the existence of forms speak partly correct in assigning them a separable subsistence if they be substances but speak partly incorrect because they assert unity to be a form in the case of many things and the cause of this position with these platonists is the following that they have no rational account to render as to what are substances of this kind i mean such as are incorruptible and have a subsistence independent of singulars and sensibles therefore do they constitute them as the same in the species with things that are corruptible for we know these namely ideal man and ideal horse adding to sensibles the things signified by the term ideal although indeed if we had not beheld the stars yet this would be no hindrance i presume to the existence of eternal substances in addition to those which we have already attained a knowledge of wherefore also though even now we may not have it in our power to see what eternal substances are yet perhaps it will be necessary that there be some eternal substances in existence at any rate that indeed therefore neither any of those reputed universals is substance nor that there is any substance composed of substances is evident chapter seventeen but what and what sort of a thing we ought to define substance let us again declare just as if having made another commencement for perhaps from these statements will be evident the circumstances also concerning that substance which is separated from sensible substances since therefore substance is a certain first principle and cause from this starting point must we pass onwards in our investigation but the inquiry why a thing subsists is invariably carried on in this way namely why one thing is inherent in a certain other for the investigation why a musical man is a musical man indeed is to engage in the inquiry that has been mentioned namely why or on what account a man is musical or it is to engage in the inquiry of something else therefore in sooth the investigation why this thing is the thing which it is is no investigation at all for it is necessary that the wherefore and the existence of a thing should inhere as manifest entities now i say for instance the moon undergoes an eclipse and of the inquiry why a thing is that thing which it is there is one principle and one cause in the case of all things as on what account a man is a man or a musician a musician except some one say that each thing is indivisible in regard to itself but this would be to constitute unity but this is both common in the case of all things and is a thing that is concise one however might inquire why man is that kind of an animal that he is this then is evident that such a one does not investigate why he who is a man is a man accordingly he engages in the inquiry why a certain thing subsists as what is common in the case of something but that it does so subsist ought to be evident for if it be not thus he inquires after nothing as to take an instance why does it thunder 
why because sound is produced in the clouds for so one thing as the cause of another is that which is under investigation and on what account do these things as bricks and stones constitute a house it is evident then that he investigates the cause but this is the essence or very nature of a thing that is if one is to express himself logically which in the case of some things is that for the sake of which a thing subsists that is the final cause as perhaps in the case of a house or a bed but in the case of other things it is something that has imparted motion in the first instance for this also is a cause but a cause of this kind is such a cause as is sought for in the case of a thing that is being produced and destroyed but the other cause also is sought for in the case of a thing already in existence the subject of investigation however is in an eminent degree latent i mean such a one as is involved in the things that are mutually not predicated of one another as for instance in the inquiry what man is on account of its being asserted that he is simply so and so but not from any definition being framed to the effect that he is this or that it is requisite however if they conduct the inquiry correctly to investigate such but if not it will be the case that nothing will be under investigation and something under investigation in common but since it is requisite to have in possession the being of a thing and that it should subsist it is evident that the inquiry is about matter why it subsists as for instance these particulars constitute a house why because these subsist as that which is the being of a house thus too is it in the inquiry why man is this particular thing or why this body is in possession of this particular quality the like inquiry is made wherefore the cause of the matter is under investigation but this is the form by which anything subsists and this is substance it is evident therefore that in the case of simple substances there is not any investigation in existence nor any disciplinary teaching but there is a different mode of investigation of things of this sort since however that which is compounded of something and compounded in such a way as that the whole is one thing but not as a heap but as a syllable yet a syllable is not the elements of speech nor the same thing with the letters b and a nor is flesh the same with fire and earth for when a dissolution of these takes place flesh and syllable no longer exist as in the instance of the flesh and the syllable but the elements subsist that is the fire and earth continue to subsist the syllable in this case is something besides not only the elements of speech namely the vowel and the mute but also something else and the flesh not only is fire and earth or the warm and the cold but also something else if therefore it is requisite that also flesh be either an element or that which is compounded from elements if it is an element again will there be the same reasoning for from this even from fire and earth will consist the flesh and further from something else something different so that the progression will go on to infinity but if it be compounded from an element it is evident that it will not consist of one but many or it will be that very thing itself wherefore again in the case of this as in the case of the flesh or syllable we shall put forward the same reasoning now it would seem that there is something of this sort and that it is not an element and the cause at least of this thing being flesh but that a syllable in like manner also is it concerning other things but the substance of each thing constitutes this in truth for this is the first cause of being or substance since however some things are not substances of things but this is the case with as many substances as according to nature are constituted as well as by nature to some also would this nature appear to be substance or it is not an element but a first principle now an element is that whereunto as inherent in a thing as matter a compound is divided as for instance of the syllable a b a 
and b are the elements end of chapter seventeen and end of book six recording in memory of mitchell edwards